there's a couple of points I, I, I thought on this. One is um, never waste the pediatric indication when discussing a drug with an adult, right? That, that, not, the, not the parent. I meant the adult that may be a little hesitant to go on a drug when they're 40 and 50 and 70 years old and, and letting them know, like, this was tested in little kids. Like, so I write this for six-year-olds. And that's wow. amazingly reassuring for people, right? Because there really is a lot of work that you have to, that, that is hard to get, that label. And it really requires uh, uh, just a, a, a whole bunch of work. Two, and I'd be curious what you guys think is, you know, a, an eight-year-old with moderate to severe psoriasis, um, it, he, they, they have some issues they're gonna have to deal with. That is not someone untreated who might expect to have a normal life expectancy or a normal quality, anything resembling a normal quality of life into adulthood. Uh, th their joint disease can be terrible. Their risk of early cardiovascular death is high. And you know, talking to parents about injecting a drug into their little kid for a skin problems seems so foreign and imbalanced to them. And you know, I think you do have to explain some of the epidemiologic risks associated with leaving things alone. Now, when you were having a conversation with a patient that had moderate to severe disease in the 1990s or 80s or early 2000s, and it was cyclosporin, and you could go maybe a year or two because you're really gonna risk renal failure, or kidney or, or um, methotrexate with cirrhosis, pulmonary fibrosis, bone marrow suppression, it was a completely legitimate conversation to say, is my life being put at risk from the drug versus the disease? And back then, we didn't know the disease shortened people's lives and gave them heart attacks. So it was all about the drug risk. Now the conversation cannot be like, I think I'm just gonna let the disease ride because I'm afraid of the drug. It's like, no, you, are, you have a load of trouble associated with this problem and not treating has real consequences that go far beyond the appearance of this thing. So you have to deal with it. And the risks associated with the treatment are so small compared to the real risks of the disease. So I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that because I know you've done a lot of work on that. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, I, I would say there's oftentimes a lot of hesitation actually for the parent to start their child on a biologic, right, rightfully so, it's, it's scary, right? Um, and so I see it, it's something that I, I kind of work on you know, over some visits. We know that younger kids are at, you know, pe people who, it, who are younger, who have moderate to severe psoriasis are, are at the greatest risk for developing depression and suicidality later on. So, um, so I, I, you know, I tell the parents, you know, um, it's really important that we address this because, you know, we, we talk a lot about molecular scar of uh, psoriasis, but, you know, what about the mental scarring, you know, that the child is, experiencing. So I actually try to, and I say, you know, if this was my child, this is what I would do. And they, you know, parents are different and they're, they, I say, but don't worry, I don't want to, you know, push anything onto you. But I do think, you know, this may be something your child could benefit from. Let me see you in two, three months. Let's, you know, see what you think. And then if you have any questions, you know, here's some literature and then, but you know, bring all your questions back. Cause, cause if we don't address their concerns, they, they would not go on. But I can say the vast majority of kids who have gone on these biologics, their parents are typically so thankful afterwards, right? They're like, oh my gosh, you know, this really changed their lives. And, and part of, uh, of that discussion is the benefit risk discussion um, that's very important. And it takes a little while, but I, I do have to say the reward is, is tremendous. Yeah, and, and the one thing that they often have time, they have, uh, they have is how long will my child stay on this medicine, right? Very good question. We don't have a good answer at this time right now, but what I would say is, you know, let's get your child completely clear, right, or in good control, and let's see, you know, then we can think about potentially, you know, some customization, you know, obviously this, is, this will be off-label, um, and then see, you know, what may be the minimal amount of drug that your child needs, to maintain that, that response. Um, and I say, you know, if your child still have a little bit, you know, left, that means that we probably still have not achieved that goal 
uh, before we can start the conversation about, uh, about weaning. Um, and I say, you know, there's psoriasis, well, tell us, you know, we can see it on the skin, so. Can I also just bring up one other question for the, for the panel, and it's been my experience that the sooner you can get someone on a systemic drug for psoriasis from the point of onset of disease, it seems the easier to control and the more likely I might get a durable response even post stopping the drug. Um, and I think waiting too long and being too patient is a, is a problem. I, I, I don't like waiting too long. Of course, if it's a gut tape flare, you know, and you're gonna get them over that, that's one thing. But, you know, the longer you wait, I think the harder they become to treat and they sometimes degrade and they start gaining weight and they start withdrawing socially. I think even the strongest personality cannot get past 30, 40% total body surface area involving their face and groin. That's a really tough thing. And when you're 18 and 20, that's really hard. And those are peak times people get psoriasis. Yeah, uh, a few, few thoughts on this. Um, Number one is uh, there's this concept of cumulative um, life impairment. Uh, what that means is that you know a person may be able to deal with like what you know these annoyances, but if, but if it's a chronic disease, basically like it adds up over time. And so our our ability to cope with either chronic disease or other stressors in life, you know, th there's this balance. And no matter how strong you are, if you kind of over a long period of time, as they creep up, as the stressors, in this case, the psoriasis are, is there, and as that creep up, your, your ability to cope with them, ultimately, we all have a limit, right? It's, it's kind of like, you know, you go to work, there's, I mean, totally different example, but let's say you go to work and there's a lot of congestion, right? LA traffic, you're late, and then suddenly you get a flat tire, and then, you know, like so someone spills coffee, you know, like up to a point, even the most patient person just like, like this is terrible. But you imagine- about going postal at a certain point. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, um, so, but getting to the point is that um, for people who have psoriasis at younger age, that's why it's so important to intervene earlier. Um, and also there's rationale to intervene earlier from a scientific point of view. Um, so there are these uh, uh, resonant memory T cells, which um, which kind of remembers where your psoriasis plaques are, right? So they're like, okay, we, we always home there, we always home there. And then people who've had a long uh, over a period of time, they actually have different pop start to have different populations, you know, affect different areas. So if you if you're able to intervene early, it shows that you know the duration of diseases really matters because um, it's it's easier to treat when they only had a disease for a certain period of time, given the same severity. So if you had one person come to you with 30%, the other person come to you with 30% BSA, one person had it for one year, the other person had it for 12 years, I, and then studies have shown that the person who had it for one year, it's much easier to treat at that stage. That's the point. Yeah, yeah because there hasn't been this immunologic evolution. Um, yeah, so. Don't, don't give the pound tub of triamcinolone as a long-term solution. You give the tub of triamcinolone waiting for the PA to clear, right? Joe, of the- Question, yeah. sorry. Yeah, so um, the question is, there's a subset of patients where the stressors can trigger their psoriasis. And, and oh, oh, I'm sorry, strep throat. Specific to strep. Yes, yes, so, right, so there's, there's stressors and then there's strep throat, yes. Um, so uh, there, there are a few lines of thought on there. So the first, there are, there, there are patients with classically more gut taste psoriasis associated with strep throat. So typically I would treat the strep throat and treat their psoriasis. The vast majority, well, not vast majority, but like 75, 80% of them, uh, it's, it's a limited episode and will uh, be done. And unfortunately, there's about 15 to 20% it actually goes on, that, that will be their triggering event to developing and they then morph from guttate to plaque psoriasis or have chronic guttate psoriasis, um, in which case then we'll treat, treat that. I don't put them on chronic 
anti-strep therapy. Um, I treat them for a short duration of time. Um, but you know, some of them you, you can't prevent, they just kind of um, continue. For the patients who have um, acute onset, you know, a strep-induced gutte, typically um, uh, uh, for those patients, um, one of the things, you know, phototherapy is something that's frequently recommended, may not be so feasible in the pediatric population because they're going to school. Um, you may consider uh, putting them on a biologic for a little while if it's very severe um, or treat them for a short period of time with an oral, oral therapy and then see how they do. Um, hopefully it's a limited episode, um, but yeah. And then briefly on the stressors, um, one thing, newer research is looking at sleep and psoriasis. Very interesting research showing that people who don't get a lot of sleep, their psoriasis um, can really flare up. So I'm not one of those who's like, oh, stressors are related to everything, but psoriasis, especially sleep actually, um, uh, is something that seemed to, is like the latest, hottest thing in terms of things among the stressors that can make psoriasis worse. And it's a major issue for eczema, and it's actually yeah. a measured outcome for the effectiveness of eczema drugs is sleep quality and sleep amount. 